Merci. I remember one time when I was studying at the university here in Germany, I was taking some notes in my notebook, and one of the students looked very curious at my notes and asked me if I was writing with the secret writing system that I invented for myself so nobody else would understand what I write. <laughs> But actually, I was writing with the Hebrew alphabet. Do the alphabet really look so different? To answer this question, I would like to show you a word in Hebrew. And if you can read it, or maybe even just guess what it is, please raise your hand. But don't read it out loud yet, please. <laughs> okay. Now, the same word in Arabic. and in Russian. Great. <laughs> well, some of you raised your hands, but most of you didn't. And even though you didn't raise your hand, it is a word that you all know. In fact, it stands here right behind me. It's Berlin. There is a large amount of international words today that almost everybody can understand. But as soon as they are written in a foreign alphabet, they are just not recognizable. <coughs> they do look quite different, don't they? And not just because of the forms of the letters, but also because Hebrew and Arabic are written from right to left, and they are usually written without vowels. In this case, the word Berlin is written without the E. Quite different. But what if we took a closer look? Let's isolate for a moment only the letter with the sound L. Who can see any similarities now? Mm -hmm. Well, some of you can. And what if we rotate the Hebrew Lamed, mirror the Arabic Lam, rotate and abstract a bit the Cyrillic L? <laughs> well, suddenly, they don't look so different after all. And this is, of course, not a coincidence, as this alphabet share a mutual historical origin, a fact that is not directly visible today. But I promise you, if you will divide the letters into sound groups and start to compare them, you will find a lot of similarities. And this fact encouraged me to try and reunite them in a project that I called the Global Alphabet. Well, searching for the best way to reunite them, I came up with different approaches that I would like to share with you. I began by uniting two alphabets at a time. So let's start with Hebrew and Arabic. For Hebrew and Arabic, I decided to design a layer font that unites similar sounds. Here you can see the Hebrew bet and the Arabic ba. In the font, I adjusted them to one another So when they're overlapping, you can see their similarities and their differences. Here you can see the word Berlin simultaneously readable in two different languages. For Latin and Arabic, I designed a font that unites the silhouettes of the Latin capital letters with the Arabic linear letters by using positive and negative space. So knowing just one of the alphabets is enough 
in order to be able to read the other. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> For Latin and Hebrew, I designed a font that consists of mutual characters that stay the same for, all, for both alphabets, but have to be rotated or mirrored according to the alphabet. So if this is the Latin B, this is the Hebrew Bet. Now to write Berlin, in Hebrew, we can use exactly the same characters we just have to rotate them well i wanted of course to unite the four alphabets together and i found this approach the best one to do so so i began by examining all the possible letter forms in order to make it easier to find the common ground and based on this common ground, I designed one mutual character that stays the same for all the alphabets, but sometimes have to be rotated or mirrored. So if we will go back to the example Berlin, this is how the Latin version looks like. The Cyrillic one, the Hebrew, and the Arabic. Now, we just need a final touch for Hebrew and Arabic to make it in the right direction. <laughs> and now, we have one word written in four different languages using the same characters. <laughs> and this kind of system, thank you, and this kind of system <laughs> can be used to write all kinds of international words. Famous holidays, food, technical devices, and many more. The characters are like a transitional step between the different alphabets. Well, I must admit, I was quite happy with the result. <laughs> but I still wanted to find another way to make an alphabet that would be even more global with signs that you don't have to rotate. So I thought, the best way to do it is just to invent a new one. To get some inspiration, I went back to the roots of our alphabets, where a letter was represented through a picture of something that begins with the same letter. This is called acrophony. And I wanted to apply this acrophonic principle today. So I search for international words that begin with the same sound in different languages and replace them with pictograms. <laughs> A pictogram of an avocado doesn't stand for the whole word avocado, it just stands for the sound A. Ah. And this way, it was possible to unite 109 letters into 26 pictograms. <laughs> and the pictogram represents international terms like coffee, domino, origami, USB, <laughs> yoga, and many more. But you're probably not sitting wondering about how to write Berlin. So to write Berlin, all we need is a boomerang, an éclair, <laughs> radio, 
Lime, Internet, and Narcissus. And now we have a word that everyone can read independent of the knowledge of the alphabet. And to solve the reading direction issue, we can just write it from top to bottom, like in the examples, Berlin, London, and New York. <laughs> to conclusion, I hope that now you can imagine how a world with a global alphabet would look like. <laughs> and I hope that you will remember Next time, when you see something unfamiliar, sometimes it is just enough to look at it from a different angle. Thank you.